2008 wrap up 2009 predictions. At the end of the year, it's nice to, to have a look at some of the significant events in the mobile phone industry during 2008, and also to make so predictions about what might happen next year. Are we going to be right? Well, judging by last year's predictions the answer is likely to be sometimes. Predictions for 2009 2009 will be a tough year for mobile phone manufacturers. We can expect sales to drop and customers to look for more value rather than better gadgets, reversing the trend of recent years where sales have been on an ever upward path. Expect manufacturers to slim down their product ranges and perhaps abandon market segments where they cannot make a profit. Handsets are likely to compete on value for money rather than technical wizardry, although manufacturers will continue to show off new flagship phones during the year. Apart from a proliferation of value phones, we also expect to see manufacturers taking less risks with products. They will want every launch to be a success, so hopefully we will see rather more care taken with the design and testing of new handsets next year. The introduction of 8 megapixel camera phones in the second half of 2008 sparked off another round of megapixel wars. By the end of the year we can expect to see some 10 megapixel devices with announcements perhaps coming in February. We're still waiting for video capture rates to catch up with our expectations, in our view all decent camera phones should be able to capture 640 by 480 pixels at 30 frames per second, perhaps this actually will be normal during 2009. Although QVGA displays have been the norm during 2008. Higher resolution screens are starting to appear on high-end phones. We expect to see VGA resolution screens appearing on a few mid-range phones by the end of the year. More and more handsets will feature GPS as costs come down, and geotagging photographs will be a standard feature. Phones will not kill off dedicated sat-nav units for in-car navigation but expect manufacturers to come up with some clever location-based services to open up new markets. Most mid-range phones now have HSDPA 3.5G support. By the end of 2009 we should see HSUPA as a standard feature on all 3G class devices. Wi-Fi will also be much more common. By the end of 2009 we would expect most 3G phones to support WLAN connectivity. Mobile TV has been something of a flop. Expect the rollout of DVB-H to stall as advertiser revenues dry up. A few handsets will feature DVB-T for standard terrestrial TV signals, but this is never going to be a mainstream feature. Social networking sites and web browsing are increasingly important, so the overall quality of software will improve. We think that software features will start to become more important than hardware features during 2009, and the rate of hardware development will begin to slow. Nokia The Finnish juggernaut continues to roll but is it unstoppable? Tougher competition and a deteriorating market could spell trouble during 2009. Nokia's flagship launch during this year was meant to be the Nokia N96, but it took so long to get to market that it was looking a bit old by the time it hit the streets, and many people realized that despite all the hype, the N96 was essentially the N95 with more memory and a TV tuner that didn't work in most areas. Early next year, we should see the Nokia N97 which is Nokia's second touchscreen this year after the 5800 Express Music. The N97 is perhaps what the N96 should have been all along. On paper it looks like a fabulous bit of kit. As we have mentioned before, the 5800 and N97 are not Nokia's first touch screens. Nokia are very late entrants into this market, but initial indications are that Nokia have spent some time making sure that their touch screen phones are actually very good. Nokia competes at all levels of the market though, and much nearer the bottom of their vast range are the Nokia 2323 and 2330 handsets which are aimed at getting information services and email into the hands of people who previously didn't have access to such things. Empowering the digital have-nots could be a significant achievement for Nokia if it can pull it off. However, Nokia realizes that the market is changing and is also now eyeing the content market with products such as Ovi, 
Engage and comes with music. In some cases, this puts Nokia in direct competition with mobile networks themselves who usually like to provide content. The manufacturer versus network fight is likely to heat up during 2009 and will be interesting to watch. Although smartphones will probably suffer a drop in sales during 2009, this is still an important market. Nokia will face tough competition from Android, Windows Mobile and whatever Apple has up its sleeve. During 2008, Nokia bought up Symbian completely and then created the Symbian Foundation to make the whole thing open source, presumably to compete on equal terms with Android which uses a similar business model. One thing that we have said before is that we think that the Symbian S60 platform has probably been pushed as far as it can go when it comes to high-end devices. Despite all the clever things that Nokia can do with S60, it is a pretty unpleasant thing to develop applications for and it is nowhere near as sophisticated as an OS like Android or the iPhone OS. Nokia does have the MIMO operating system though, as used in their internet tablets, and this could well end up on the phone during 2009. Expect to see a touch screen replacement for the E90 in February, and perhaps also an upgrade to the existing N96 perhaps the N96i, in the first half of the year. Sony Ericsson When Sony Ericsson was created seven years ago, it successfully turned around the ailing mobile phone businesses of both Ericsson and Sony. Initially, SE had a very small range of handsets, but almost every phone was a good one, and it was simple for potential customers to understand their product range. Recently though, the Sony Ericsson range has proliferated to the point where it is a complete mess. Sony Ericsson have acknowledged this, and intend to slim the product range down by 20%, but we think that they really need to go much further than this. After all, the recent W705 is we believe the 28th Walkman handset in the range, do we need this many Walkman phones? Of course not. It isn't just the baffling range of handsets that is causing headaches, but a critical lack of high-end phones too. In the past, Sony Ericsson has been committed to the UIQ interface running on top of Symbian, but the UIQ project has not survived the recent changes in the Symbian market, so there will be no more UIQ phones in future. Sony Ericsson do have a high-end smartphone though, and it's a good one too, the Xperia X1. The problem is that the X1 is made by HTC, and it isn't really a Sony Ericsson at all. We said last year that we expected to see Bravia handsets in Europe, but we were wrong. Toughening market conditions and a lack of interest in mobile TV probably means that we won't see them in 2009 either. Despite recent successes, 2009 is likely to be a very bad year for Sony Ericsson. Some people are even questioning if this joint venture will survive. Motorola Motorola seems to be the eternal soap opera of the mobile phone industry. For several years their mobile phone division has teetered on the brink of collapse, and recent losses have been so big that many would argue that Motorola would be better off shutting down their mobile phone business completely. Originally, Motorola said that they would split the company and float the handset business off as a separate entity, but economic conditions are so poor that this is unlikely. But it seems that Motorola isn't just going to curl up and die. We know that Motorola are spending a great deal of time and effort on developing Android handsets for the second half of 2009, and some of the rumored phone designs for next year show a radical departure in style and function. The aura can be regarded as a statement of intent, Motorola realizes that it must innovate and differentiate itself if it wants to stay in business.